Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships for our Friday highlight. Sorry for no Wednesday video, just had a lot going on in the middle of this week and was just too exhausted to get another video out. But we're here today and tomorrow featuring the Tier 8 Spanish Tech Tree Cruiser, the Cataluna? Question mark. I'm just what I'm going to call it, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I've been grinding a lot of different ships in the game. Uh, this video is actually from October, I think, uh, end of October from last year, and I've been sitting on this replay forever because I've gone up the line. I don't know if I've actually picked up the tier 10 one yet, um, but I have just been grinding nonstop with the ships in this game to reach all the tier 10s as that's my 2024 goal, but not including CVs or submarines. However, today we're talking about the Cataluna. So I'm going to read the WoWs wiki uh, and summarizing the ship. After the nationalists proclaimed victory in the Civil War, ties between Spain and the fascist regime in Italy built up momentum. Suffering from a scarcity of modern ships of all types in its service, Spain planned to study the latest advancements in global shipbuilding, including those made by Italy. The Ansaldo company came up with three heavy cruiser projects for Spain, each with its own armament composition. One of the projects provided armament to be made up of three 2 and 3 millimeter triple gun mounts. Um, and this ship was first released uh, during update 12.8. So, um, we're going to be going over... This battle isn't going to take... It's not really long, but it's not really short either. Um, but we're going to be moving up along here. Uh, so with our build, we have 11.5 kilometer concealments uh, here. So I'm using the rock here on the Islands of Ice, which is an arms race, uh, to close in on the distance. But then the enemy Udaloi uh, catches our attention, and he's kind of out uh, in the open. And I'm like, wait, is he going to go for the reload uh, mod? So I make a gamble here. I pull out broadside to his Stalingrad, and I think there's a Pogon back there, um, because I'd like to get some hits in on the enemy Udaloi. Um, but we are going to be rather crafty in turning out. And in case he decides to come back out from behind the island to get any torpedoes off, we're going to dump torpedoes. Um, because beyond the ship getting the uh, three 2 and 3mm gun mounts, uh, we also get torpedo launchers. We get 2x4 533mm torpedoes um, that have a reload time of, if you don't build into them at all, 106 uh, seconds. And their range is 8 kilometers, and they do almost 16,000 damage each. Um, this ship is relatively, in my opinion, maneuverable. Um, yeah, I don't know how to, to phrase it. it. She feels like she gets along quick, but we also take the prop mod in the fourth slot. Um, so that's definitely going to be helping us out here. Um, but, you know, enemy team's kind of showing a strong presence. You can see most of us are here. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Um, and we do catch the enemy Udaloi. My torpedo hit chances in this game are incredibly uh, abysmal because I'm constantly spamming torpedoes. Um, so sometimes it pays off uh, once in a blue moon um, when I'm not playing destroyer type ships. But let me be clear on that. So we do pick up the first blood. Uh, we get the first kill. It's going to make things a little bit easier for our teammates on this flank. The enemy team is making a bit of mistakes as they're just kind of pushing into us. Now we have this Bismarck who got slapped very heavily. Um, and now he's pushing in, and we go ahead and we use one of the gimmicks of this ship, which is her alternative firing mode. We try to be cheeky there and pick off uh, that, uh, get a second kill there. Um, and the definition of this is it can alternate between a regular firing mode and a burst firing mode. Firing the guns with the alternative firing mode enabled will fire two salvos in quick succession. This firing mode takes much longer to reload. So requirements, burst fire can be toggled on and off. Reload time is 31 seconds, interval between the individual shots, 1.8 seconds, number of bursts in a series, 2. So being able to send, you know, potentially uh, 18 2 and 3 millimeter um, shells, AP shells, downrange in very quick succession, 1.8 seconds, is like really good. Um, so we will be using it again here. But for now, we're just kind of biding our time and then figuring out the enemy team. You know, here, especially with, you know, something like Pinsery Prex, we do want to try to play out beyond the secondary range of enemy battleships. We are in range of the enemy Pinsery Prex um, with secondaries, but um, 
we don't want to just be overextending ourselves uh, as the Massachusetts. Uh, I can't talk today. <laughs> it takes the attention uh, for us here. Um, so we're just going to be minding uh, what's going on here as we now call out the Minotaur to moving up the two line uh, after our friendly Napoli died. But let me just read the pros and cons according to the WoW Wiki. Guns have flat ballistics, a good AP shell penetration and damage. Access to the burst fire, allowing her to quickly deal damage. Uh, fast reloading torpedoes, maximum uh, or high maximum speed, excuse me. Access to the repair party, which is not common among all tier eight cruisers. So that is definitely, you know, you can heal back if you make some mistakes or just take some punishment, which we're gonna be taking some punishment from this Stalingrad uh, pushing into us. Cons, poor armor. Uh, burst fire has a long cooldown, short range torpedoes. I mean, they're eight kilometers. I mean, I, I bet when I hear short, of course, read short, I think like more like four to six. You have poor AA, poor rudder shift time in the turning circle, and poor concealment. Um, hence the 11.5 that we're currently uh, working with here. Pretty sure we've built in the concealment uh, for this uh, video. Yeah, that's ba best conceal is 11.5. Um, so that's not so uh, great nor hot. Now I also have an enemy sub who's over here on the flank, so we want to be able to find out where he is. And apparently there is some <laughs> replay bug at the time where I can actually see where I'm dropping uh, the depth charges. But I'm going to crit uh, critique myself here. I mess up and I make a mistake. Um, when we have a Stalingrad pushing, I mean he's a tier 10 battle cruiser, uh, very nasty guns. Um, I decide that, yo, I should, like, go bow into him here, um, which honestly is really dumb, because now when I go bow in, not only are we going to take a lot of damage from his amazing guns, but, uh, we're also going to be, uh, hurting quite a lot in that fact that we can't just simply kite out, so I should have remained in the kiting out position and just moved and getting the island out of the way. But Stalingrad shows a little too broad, much broadside to get his rear turret off, so we're going to use the alternative firing mode here, which is going to net us uh, four citadels in total, and we're going to get his health pool much lower. But it was mo really important for us to do that there, because otherwise, you know, with that longer reload time of the main battery, which is 12.5 seconds without a drone rush or like anything like top grade gunner kicking in, um, Stalingrad will win the cruiser on cruiser engagement certainly here uh, which again was another mistake for me to be going uh, bow in here um, I think part of the mentality was is that the enemy team was just dying really fast <laughs> so I was like I want to make sure I get some damage before this game gets over but our, we were being mindful that we also had a friendly Kluber around and so he is able to get the kill there with his guns on the broad side Stalingrad and we're going to pop the Hydra up again and we're still fishing and trying to figure out where this enemy submarine is. If we can assist our Bear as he's assisted us. Um, now overall, I would say Cataluna is a pretty decent tier 8 uh, cruiser here in the game. You know, we talked about um, her guns a bit. We've talked about her torpedoes and the alternative firing mode. It is nice that you get the uh, airstrike depth charges as we look to try to reach the sub there, but he's just a little too far away. So we've got the HE already loaded for him. Um, and these HE shells do have, uh, I just had it pulled up. Have a, I think it's a 15%? Yeah, 15% chance of starting to fire on target. And in addition to that, uh, you have the heal, which we're getting to, to take him off. And we also have spotter plane. Uh, so that's actually very helpful and being able to uh, be longer range because, you know, right now we have a 16.5 kilometer gun range, but especially if you run into the higher tiers, <laughs> like this game, when you see tier 10s, you know, you don't necessarily want to be playing super close. Uh, if you can keep them a little bit at arm's length, that is going to be very helpful. And then on top of that, we have our five kilometer hydroacoustic search. So that's just really helping us out all around here. Um, to have a pretty formidable tier eight cruiser um, here in the Spanish line. Um, so now as we continue to move up, we're being very mindful of the enemy Yamato. You know, cruisers in Yamato, especially when you're tier eight. Uh, and so barely, barely uh, almost take a direct hit there, uh, but we avoid it. Um, but now we have the, the our Parcival, who our Kluber is charging down. And so 
Kleber <laughs> is having some fun here. Um, and we probably could have already switched to the alternative firing mode in the previous salvo. Um, but I was like, oh, maybe we'll do it after uh, that previous salvo I had. And then Kleber managed to get a torpedo hit on him. So it really brought him pretty low. So if we wanted to get that kill secure, we could have done that with the pilot more quickly there. Um, but as I said, poor AA. Um, so against tier 10 CVs, uh, you will uh, be suffering a bit. So let me talk a little more about the AA here. Um, unless we just, yeah, we just spotted the sub. <laughs> He's charging us full on. He doesn't have much battery life, but Clever, I think, probably picks him off here. Yeah, Clever gets to pick him off there. Uh, but the AA defense, uh, you have a actual 6 kilometer range. Uh, your constant damage at the long range is 98 damage per second. Medium range is 133 damage per second. Constant damage is 77. So, I mean, it's not amazing AA. You don't play this ship for AA. You play her really for... I mean, she has a large amount of consumables. Um, in addition to the fact that you also have uh, some really decent... Uh, armament choices between her two and three millimeter guns, the alternative firing mode, torpedoes, her depth charge strike. Um, so all those things make this cruiser pretty good. Uh, it was very comfortable for me grinding up this ship to the tier nine. Um, so it definitely wasn't something that I would say was a very painful tier eight cruiser to play. Um, I had actually decent fun with her, so I think she's a pretty good ship. So we're gonna get the uh, dreadnought, <laughs> and we're gonna get first blood with 99,000 damage here uh, with the two kills and um, getting some more cheeky damage with those citadels and on the enemy Stalingrad. So that's what makes even a tier 10 ship have to respect your cruiser like Stalingrad when you can just simply switch into that burst fire mode. Our friendly clip is gonna take the top. He did an excellent job. And we're gonna come in on second here um, as we look at the team score. And going into the detailed report, you're gonna see that we did take over 57,000 damage. Uh, we actually had a little bit of spotting damage, 11,000. Um, but then you can see most of the damage was uh, between our main, and our, it was our main battery, mostly the AP over the high explosive. Um, and then going into premium count, you can see what uh, the amount of credits and XP that we ended with. So this is the tier eight tech tree Cataluna. So I'm excited to, I need to do a video on the tier nine and tier 10 eventually. Uh, we'll have to see because I'm just grinding up multiple lines right now uh, here in the game. So I do really, I do need to apologize that I, I haven't done as many polls about the Friday highlight um, and Saturday upgraded commander build video. It's just really been trying to get through a lot of ships, um, which I'm actually doing a pretty good job so far this year. Um, so then you'll probably start seeing some more polls maybe by the summer, maybe going into the fall. Because um, I'm just really trying to get through as many lines as possible as, as fastly as possible. Uh, as credits permit. <laughs> so if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. And tomorrow, I'll do an upgraded commander build video here on the ship, and we'll look at it more in depth and detail uh, between the commander, modules, upgrades, and etc. So until next time, take care.